Okay, well, we can, uh, we can definitely talk about that. Okay. What do we need for a quorum? Steph, Rod? Hi, oh. Bowen. <coughs> Good morning. That's the second. I think it's um, five. Hey, it's Natasha here, but unfortunately, I have to leave at 10. We're, we're glad to have you here. We may need you for the quorum, at least for the first part of the meeting here. Yeah, we need six. And we have. So we've got one, Kirsten. Two, three, four, five, six. We have six. Okay. And who's still to join? Um, well, I don't know if we're going to see Wolfgang. Were you going to follow up on that, Allison? No, I wasn't. No. How about Michael? And Michael, yeah. And um, Jody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure Jody wants to be here. So yeah. Jody probably <clears throat> will sign in. So I'm just worried about losing quorum when Natasha leaves. So Marcus may join us when Natasha. Oh, Marcus, yeah. Switch off. Maybe I'll just pop him a note to that effect, actually. There's Wendy. Rod. Good morning. Good morning. Is Rod there? No, he's not. Yeah, okay. I, I'm, here, I'm here, Ed. I'm just not on video at this point. OK. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce Jamie. Yeah, ab Maybe absolutely. Wait, wait. Do that as part of the official part of the meeting so the public meets her. OK. Um, but I just well, this isn't yeah. official yet. Oh, OK. Oh. We have to be careful, Allison. OK. I just assume this is all illegit for the moment. Well, no, no, she can be recognized as a member of the public attending the meeting. Yes. Absolutely. And, yes. And, um, and I think it would be appropriate, you know, at, in our five minutes at the beginning of the meeting for uh, public address that, uh, that Jamie just introduces herself. So, or you introduce her. So that's, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. And I was also thinking we have a two to three minute uh, update on, on uh, the hearth. And I usually do that, but you probably are in a better position to do it too. Just what's been going on in the last three. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> okay, Jody's here. Great. Hi, Jody. Welcome. Okay, let's get going. Yeah, let's let's get going. Um, Steph, I don't. I unfortunately, I'm just coming back from a job site here, so I don't have the agenda in front of me yet. Uh, okay. But I know that uh, that we can, have can. at the opening. You know, we have our public comments. So let's say hi to Jamie and then. Uh, well, can you just adopt, adopt the agenda after. in the minutes? Yeah. Okay. I move adoption of the agenda. Okay. Uh, any second for that? Second it. Okay. And uh, I guess either raise your uh, your real physical hand or say aye, and I'll say aye. 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 Okay. And then uh, then. Our minutes, um, do we have anything to still add to the minutes or can we adopt them as they are? Or sorry, the agenda rather? No, the, the minutes. minutes. Or the minutes, yes, minutes from past meeting. Okay, yeah, that's what we need. I'd like to comment, uh, very good job, Steph. That was, that was a very good summation of a, <laughs> a somewhat complex meeting, so thank you. So that means you're moving adoption? <laughs> and I'll second it. Yes, okay. Okay, then all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I think that was three eyes that I heard. Do we have other Aye. hands? Yep. Yep. Okay. So all in favor, I think. Good. Okay, well then uh, let's uh, carry on with the meeting. Steph, do you want to? Okay, now we have public comments. Did, um, um, and there's Jamie Sheffer, as our esteemed member of the public, who's coming to talk to us. Hi, good morning, everyone. Hi, Jamie. Morning, morning, Jamie. Welcome. And uh, 
just for the sake of everyone else, uh, as Steph was pointing out at the beginning of the meeting, um, we understand that you have applied to become a member of the, the Economic Development Committee, which uh, uh, thank you for applying for that. And the procedure is it would go to council your application, which I believe it hasn't yet. And uh, then council would decide on all new membership for the committee. But um, we're really happy to uh, have you here to uh, introduce yourself this morning. Thanks, thank you. Well, it's almost uh, three months that I've been on the island. Um, wow, it's a beautiful place, thank you. Um, we had a really great ceremony yesterday for um, in, uh, National Indigenous Day where we blessed or had the sign, um, uh, the First Nations um, sign for Bowen Island uh, celebration. It was really, um, really wonderful. It was an honor to be part of it. It was a great celebration and it, um, I, I think it's opening up better relationships between uh, First Nations and um, us here on Bowen Island. So it was a great, it was a great event and soon there will be a video out that everyone can watch virtually how the ceremony went. Um, so yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Wait, tell me, what did you bless yesterday? Sorry? What was blessed? The sign, the, the, sign. Um, thank you. Um, I can't. Nation language sign for Bowen Island. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, that sign. Yeah. Just for the public, maybe we should note that uh, since this is being recorded and videoed, that Jamie is the new executive director for the ARTH, AKA the Bowen Island Arts Council. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as for um, uh, her uh, appointment, potential appointment to the uh, ECEDC, the uh, ED of the uh, ARTH previously, BIAC has always been a member of the uh, CEDC. In fact, um, Jacqueline was vice chair for, I believe, th three or four years. So uh, there's a precedent for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do we want to talk about action items next? Do you want me to review them, Rod? Okay, I'm gonna review the action items. Number one, circulate electronic version of the report that identifies section of the official- Okay, community. okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. Okay, I just have to come and sit down with you. You have to go back into old files that I can't go into. Okay, sure, we can do that. Okay, so um, Councillor Morse and staff. Number two, presentation for the digital meetup on the by local campaign complete. Number three, follow up with Tom McComb from Metro Vancouver Parks regarding installing a pit toilet at the trailhead by Seaside Cottage. That is complete. Um, that ended up being a collaborative project. Metro Vancouver and Bowen Island Municipality are cost sharing, operation sharing, the new bathroom um, at the trailhead by the um, hospital. Number four, written documentation that Sunshine Coast Community Future Services Bowen Island that has been provided. It's also on our website. It's on their website. Number five, Wendy sent an invitation to the Innovation Island webinar to Rod Marsh. That's either complete or moot. Done. Um, you're muted. Can't hear you. Can't hear her. Okay. You have to unmute yourself. If you can't unmute, you could maybe do chat, use the chat function. Sometimes I know my speaker doesn't work for some strange Sorry, reason. hi, can you hear me? Oh, there we yes. go. <laughs> I can't hear you guys now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but any, oh, sorry, can you hear me now? Okay. Perfect, great. Um, so yeah, with regards to the DR um, uh, webinar, so um, I had a, um, a chat with the uh, DR, I guess, um, uh, contact there, Graham, and um, he had uh, was really kind in um, offering to Bowen Island uh, businesses uh, the opportunity for them to apply to the, the DR um, program. So this is a program 
uh, that um, it's called DR stands for digital uh, uh, digital economy response program and it basically helps um, uh, businesses that wants to be in uh, digital online presence including having online payment supports so it was a program that was um, uh, established for being funded by ICT Bowen Island unfortunately was not it's not part of the ICT uh, boundary um, so Bowen Island uh, businesses uh, technically were not eligible to apply um, but in speaking to uh, Graham he has uh, offered to um, uh, extend the uh, program supports and, and assistance to 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 Bowen Island's businesses and I uh, that was conveyed to Rod, um, uh, so so Rod's aware of that, and um, yeah, so I think Steph, you were aware of that as well. I did not promote that very widely, though. Maybe I can re find that link. Is it still happening? I believe it is. So the only one maybe caveat was that, based on my understanding and speaking to Rod, um, uh, the the number of I guess businesses that indicated interest. Um, uh, uh, to to this program, I think was less than five. So knowing that, you know, um, uh, Innovation Island uh, said, sure, you know what, let them just sign up to program, state that they're from Bowen Island and, and Graham was gonna um, uh, ensure that they would be provided services. If the numbers, you know, um, substantially increase through, through further promotion, then I think we'll need to kind of work out a, a better solution that's kind of more sustainable. So okay. that's something, yeah. Yeah, Steph, I think we knew that and we kind of decided not to really put it out there in a big way. Just, you know, for Rod and I as navigators, we're going to let people know if they needed that kind of thing. And All right, okay. Yeah. I'll just leave it then. Okay, that's all I have. We've got a couple of future ongoing actions, but we're not going to um, push those too hard right now, I don't think. Okay, ready to move on, Rod. I'm seeing um, oh, updates from the province. Wendy and Stephanie. Hi, <laughs> I have a new mute of my um, so hi everyone. Um, I guess um, uh, uh, do, as you'll see, we have Stephanie uh, Cepeda, uh, Cepeda on the line. So Stephanie is my colleague uh, from the Ministry of Jobs, Economic Development and Competitiveness and she's based in Victoria. And so um, it's great that Stephanie's able to join us today. Um, Stephanie has attended uh, some of the um, uh, virtual business meetups uh, that Bowen has been uh, hosting weekly. And um, I thought it'd be great for Stephanie to kind of uh, have an understanding and the sense of what Bowen's going through, um, you know, uh, what, what's kind of on the ground um, in terms of, you know, what's been happening with, with COVID. And, and maybe I'll just turn it to, to Stephanie now to kind of um, give an introdu introduction and, and any uh, other um, information that she can share from her, prov uh, from her ministry, sorry. Sure. Um, so you've probably seen my face on some of the business meetup calls, which, um, I really enjoyed attending, by the way. Um, so I work with regional programs and engagement out of Ministry of Jobs, Economic Development and Competitiveness. Our group um, during COVID has been trying to connect with as many economic recovery groups as possible. Our primary goal on that one is really just been to hear the concerns of communities, hear what kind of issues that they're facing, and make sure that um, any kind of pressing concerns or emerging issues are going up to our executive and making sure that they're known um, so that we can develop programs and policies to respond to them. Um, and then also to be able to share back information when needed. Your group has been pretty well prepared and equipped on that front. I haven't, um, you guys have got it all quite handled. So um, haven't really had too much information sharing in that area. Um, there, there were a few things that I wanted to share, and then there were a few questions that were posed to me in an email prior to that, so uh, prior to this meeting. The first update that I wanted to share is that the province is looking for input on economic recovery right now. So the province has released um, an economic recovery ideas survey. Um, they have kind of a paper that's been released about some of the values that are guiding the province as they develop a, an economic recovery response. And so I'd invite you to take a little read through that. Um, and I can 
put a link in the chat after this. Um, then there's a few ways that you can share your ideas for economic recovery. There's a survey that you can take. You can respond to the paper directly with a written submission. And then there's also a bunch of virtual town halls that are coming out. This is something that the province is doing in addition to the economic recovery task force um, that has the premier and a number of kind of uh, key business uh, stakeholder organizations like BCBC, a Vancouver Board of Trade uh, and others. So I'd invite you to take a look at that. Um, the other little tidbit I wanted to note just to build on Wendy's comment about the DER3 program is that there will be another sort of similar program launched called the Digital Marketing Bootcamp program through, um, we've run a pilot version before through Alacrity um, and there's probably gonna be another version coming out. Um, it might be connected with Innovation Island as well this time. Um, so that's a, I think it's a six or 12, 12 week program, six or 12, that anyone can sign up to if they want to learn some of those digital marketing skills, how to move their business online, how to promote their business online. So that's another tool and resource. Um, submissions for the, for the latest round of, of that program are not yet open, but I'll leave a link in the chat so you can um, keep an eye on that for when it does become open. Um, the question that I was asked in the in the email prior to the meeting, there were two. One was to give a little reflection on the business meetups, which I've been really looking forward to doing because I really love attending those meetup groups. Um, I do attend a bunch of different regional groups um, in the island and the lower mainland, and um, you guys have built a lovely community connection on those on those calls, and uh, particularly love the harvest gathering space that you make for everybody to contribute and hear from everybody. I think that's a really uh, valuable piece um, just in, in comparison to some of the other ways that I've seen calls approach. So my kudos to you. I think it's amazing that you've built that kind of community and had that regular attendance um, this whole time. Um, and then there was some questions on what the province's involvement is going to look like moving forward. For the moment, I, I plan to kind of continue to attend the, the business calls and just hear what's going on. I'm always open to um, having a chat if there's particular concerns that you want to bring forward or you want um, the ministry to know about, we can bring those forward. Um, but really, I also wanted to put the question back to your group to see what, you know, how do you see the, the ministry's involvement continuing? Is there anything in particular that you're looking for or a way that we could support better? Um, we're always interested to, to hear what it is that you need and then we can take that forward and see how we can best respond. So I, I rambled on a bit. I'm just going to leave that there and um, I'll leave those few links in the chat. And if you have any ideas for, for what you'd like my involvement to look like moving forward, I'd be happy to hear that. Thanks so much, Stephanie. It's great to uh, to hear from you, and and it has been nice to see that uh, you've been able to attend our digital meetups and and some of our other meetings over, uh, and appreciate the feedback. and And I'll certainly pass on to Chris Corrigan, who um, is a previous chair of this committee and who's been uh, leading those meetings uh, because he's the one who's designed that uh, that format and really holds that space so well. Um, and we look forward to actually, Chris has agreed to host more meetings now on a monthly basis uh, for the business community. And, uh, and we're not sure, of course, what the next priority will be in the middle of July because things seem to be changing and, um, and in August and September and so on. So we look forward to carrying on and, um, and understanding how our businesses are faring in the opening up stages as well. Um, as you can hear, I've got connected here, everyone. <laughs> um, I haven't, uh, so next on our agenda though, Steph, can you bring that up for us? Hang on, oh, Rob, anyone else, I... Sorry, if anyone else has any questions for Stephanie at this point. Well, I've got a question for Wendy. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and I'm not sure whether you've answered it already or not, and I apologize because I was trying to look it up. There, was a, there was a grant announcement on yes. June 19th. Yes. And I, were those any con connection to the, when they killed the rural 
dividend yeah. program. I, yeah. So, yeah. So Those just all the applications that had gone in for that, that were looked at as part of that. You are correct. So that announcement um, uh, was a provincial uh, announcement. I, I believe it's the community year, uh, year end community grants um, uh, funding announcement. And, um, and those were um, basically uh, um, uh, based from the RDP applications from last summer. And when the RDP program was suspended in the fall, um, everything was basically taken, you know, um, uh, off from 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 further consideration. And then, um, uh, I guess, in the early part of the year, um, there was further discussions, and a number of communities then um, had an opportunity to um, uh, to have their applications be reconsidered, and uh, and the successful applications uh, were posted on on that uh, announcement. And those applications, those successful applications, were primarily based on um, the potential for job job creation as well as um, the ability to kind of strengthen local economic development um, so so that's where that that funding um, announcement was made and so it, that's different I believe uh, from the other one I think you were asking about the R the is that the triple RF the regional relief or the yeah, province provides grants to support people rural economies and this yeah. was um, 14 million in grants for over 150 projects Correct. Yes. So I think um, I'm trying to see whether, oh, yeah, I think you were asking about, I'm trying to look at your questions here. Are they from the pro program Rural Relief Program? So I'm not sure, but if I, uh, Rural Relief Program, if I think I understand where you're coming from, there is a federal uh, program. I didn't think I asked if it was Rural Relief Oh, program. okay. You did. Perfect. Okay. So that's yeah. not, let's, yeah, let's not get yeah. confused so with I, the federal I, program. I was wondering yeah. if those grants, where, where that program came from, right. and if the grant the applications that were considered were the ones that had been deferred out of the uh, out of the RDP they, program. Yeah, yeah, when they killed the RDP program. Yeah. So I'm you got it exactly. Okay. That, that's where so it came from. That leads me to my second question. We had two applications in from Bowen into that um, when the rural dividend program was was axed. Um, one was for uh, from the um, housing spurt, and one was from tourism Bowen Island. So what those they didn't get an opportunity to reapply or get thrown. So into basically, the maybe they. I yeah. So I what I what I um uh, uh, what I did I guess um in, in in talking to my colleagues uh, who who manages that RDP program, um I believe uh, those applications were looked at, but perhaps um they were not successful simply because based on the hundreds of applications that came in um these uh programs that were successful had a greater potential um, uh, for job creation purposes for example or for strengthening the local economy so my understanding was yes you are correct i believe in this in, in the year-end funding bowen there were three applications for bowen you're right tourism bowen island and two from not-for-profits organization um, and uh, and so they were not successful. Okay. All righty. Thank you. No worries. Um, maybe what I'll I'll just add is that um, uh, just alluding to what Stephanie had mentioned about that um, uh, BC recovery survey. Um, take a look at, at the survey and the opportunity to kind of um, address some of the needs from your community. Um, uh, and 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 uh, I know that RDP that that Bowen was successful in in an uh, Bowen Island Munis municipality was successful in 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 an RDP application um, previously, and uh, they and that uh, Bowen Island um, Community Economic Development Committee actually had success, successfully advocated for and lobbied for the inclusion of Bowen Island uh, as part of the RDP program. So I think all those are crucial information to kind of help you guys um, further in in addressing those needs and. Just kind of put that in the, app, in, in the survey. The other thing I would also add is um, just touching on the um, uh, digital side of things. Um, it's great that Stephanie mentioned about this new, potentially new program that's yet to be announced with Alacrity. So, so this will definitely gives a broader uh, range and, and opportunity for, for Bowen Island businesses to participate in. And if you're not already aware, there is a small business um, online marketplace as well. So, um, so businesses that have already an online presence you can um, um, 
have your product or your services uh, be um, be be uh, available on the small business uh, online marketplace site. So that's something to think about. And um, my last item, just as an update, is um, uh, you, uh, the Ministry of um, uh, Municipal Affairs and Housing um, is potentially having their next round of the uh, Invest in Canada Infrastructure Program. That's the uh, bilateral funding program between the feds and BC. Um, we're hearing that they could be announced relatively soon. Um, uh, just as a reminder, Bowen was successful again in the community center funding application, I believe, from, from this particular program. And also congratulations on uh, recruiting Liam um, Edwards um, <laughs> as Bowen's new CAO. And Liam, just so Thank you know, you. Liam, and you probably know that too, Liam was the ED or the executive director <laughs> in MA that actually uh, ran the uh, the uh, Invest in Canada infrastructure program. So, so I yeah. think you know, <laughs> a lot of good connections there. So. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Wendy. Yeah, we uh, certainly I just had the opportunity to meet Liam recently myself and uh, it was a pleasure uh, talking to him. I think that the uh, municipalities made a great hire. So we're looking forward to agree. working yeah. with him. Yeah. Absolutely. Steph, can you tell us what's next on the agenda here? Council update, probably. Am I up next, Jeff? You're muted, uh, okay. Stephanie. Yes, there's um, actually, I'm just getting it up here now. Can everyone hear me? Because I don't hear Steph. No. He's muted. Sorry, um, I did have um, Councillor Kale Morse and Nicholson do um, okay. All right. excerpts from the meetings, but it uh, looks like Councillor Morse is going to run the whole show. Uh, oh, good. Okay. Um, so you've got a link to the very excellent report that Maureen gave on the activities of the committee over the last couple of months and council was most impressed and um, council highlights. And then on point B, um, if you look at the uh, information item and the actual um, resolutions that were passed, <clears throat> there's a, there was a timing issue. Um, we had our last meeting on April 27th and on April 27th council meeting that evening was when they were discussing giving the second reading and going for public hearing for the short term rental package and the um, so we told everybody and read out the resolution to cut back on the, you know, to reconsider the 120 days and to slow the process down. Um, as you know, that didn't happen. And the public hearing is tonight for the short-term rental bylaws. So at the um, 26th, um, the May 25th meet, no, the May 25th meeting, are, um, is that the council meeting I'm looking at? No, the June, um, what date was the last council meeting, Steph? Uh, eight, the 8th? Yeah, so June the 8th meeting was, was the um, meeting where our minutes and our formal resolutions were actually presented. So that's why the first resolution is just to receive the recommendations from council because at that point, second reading had happened, the public hearing was scheduled. So nothing could change and the bylaw itself wasn't on the table that night for discussion. So that's why the resolution is different, just to receive it. The second resolution went ahead as, as proposed to request staff to work, you know, fast track things where we, people were applying for applications and so forth. So I think, unless anybody's got any questions, that's it. I think Jody does, but I do too. Okay. Hi, Alison, thanks. Um, I, I actually watched the the meeting, the council meeting where Emma gave the presentation after we met uh, the last, yeah. Uh, yeah. and and our the our committee recommendation was not read and it was not presented at that time because I was watching for it and I was really we disappointed. Because I remember Sorry? Maureen. Yeah, we did, but no, it wouldn't have been during Emma's presentation. It would have been during the dis council discussion. Because well, I remember I, Maureen explaining why she voted no. 
okay, well, I'd have to go back, but I remember that it wasn't formally presented or whatever, and I was quite disappointed. Oh, I was no, disappointed. it wasn't formally presented because at that point we'd had the meeting that afternoon. We didn't have a formal motion to present because we didn't have minutes. We told them what the motion was, that the committee was supporting slowing down and, and leaving out the 120 days because I... But when you, I'm not sure what you mean by formally. Sorry to support Jody's point. I think, I believe another part of the recommendation was that council directs staff to um, provide in writing um, data regarding alternative accommodations in the comparator community communities. So there had been discussion about. Yeah, so, so that part didn't get presented. No. And then that went forward again for council two weeks ago. And then council. Oh, okay didn't address it again. So I'm just wondering, were you and Michael and Maureen a part okay, of it? Well, there was no way, there was nothing to, um, when our minutes were on the agenda, we re the council received for information. I think, I'll have to go back, but at this point, it's going forward for a public hearing. Right. And that resolution was passed at the May 25th meeting. Allison, I so, thought you and Michael were going to also put forward, uh, based on yeah our discussion in our last meeting, a recommendation that the whole thing be put on hold. We did. It was a non a non starter. Yeah, you can recommend, but council's not necessarily going to do it. They don't have to do it. Yeah. Same with 120 days. It was very clear from the discussion and everything else. And I think I tried to move a motion that the 120 days didn't get seconded. So it won't show up in a minute. Wow. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. It was very, very clear from the discussion that. Uh, yeah. Well, and to Jody's point, um, I didn't get to watch that whole meeting. Um, but if, you know, if she didn't feel like Emma presented, you know, what are you know really reflected what we had discussed maybe that you know was this part of it like yeah and and um i tried and i think michael did too and to, to re reflect the you know 120 and things need to slow down but there really wasn't any appetite to slow down or to remove the 120. And then actually, I'm just looking at the, um, the, the agenda from June 8th, and it's item 9.3, and it does say it's um, that council directs staff to include information about alternative accommodation. Yeah, yeah. it's in that there. Was a that was a recommendation for council to discuss and yeah. resolve on, but they rejected that. Okay. Well, they didn't reject it. We can add item, it was definitely... But the mm. public hearing had already been scheduled. It didn't slow anything down. Um, Allison, are you going? Are you going to be on that public thing tonight? Well, the public hearing is a pro, is a process. There will be no decisions made. It'll be to receive people's comments. So, if people want things changed, I think each of you will have to individually speak up at, at the public hearing. Well, I went to the else. last open no. house. I don't know. Open houses are different from public hearings. Public hearings is the official report to council from the individuals who think that there's their, it, the way the act reads, it says their property will be um, impacted, but um, it doesn't. General members of the public also comment in public hearings about whether they, they like the uh, bylaw, whether they want to change what the impacts are, positive or negative. And then council receives all that information and there'll be a further decision two weeks from that probably on going forward with third reading or having changes made based on what's said at the public hearing. Hmm. Okay. But I, I wouldn't count on just because you spoke at the information session um, necessarily, it, it's good to speak out at the public hearing. All right. Right. And I guess at public hearings, there are also people, uh, letters are received by council for public hearings as well. There's been letters coming in over the weekend. Yeah. And then they'll, they'll all be for, part of the public record. So are, uh, are, are the, is there a deadline for written submissions or letters for this public hearing? No later than the end of the public hearing. So 
and yeah. I would, for safety purposes, make sure it got there by four o'clock. And if somebody's going to speak, it's probably good to, to provide a written report mm -hmm. as well, because your, your comments will get very briefly reported in the public hearing document. So if you're against a specific thing, you have to be very succinct and say that. Right. Okay. Uh, Jody, did you have another comment then? Yeah, Allison, um, have you, did, was it ever presented, because this is my new angle now, that um, I would like to see um, the bylaw as a compromise bylaw. Um, since we met, uh, Michael had mentioned Nelson, and if you actually look to Nelson, um, I really like what they've got. They've got um, three options to get a license for a short-term rental. One is a year-round license. One is a four-month license with um, four periods of 31 consecutive days. I guess that's a four-month. Um, and then a 31-day license. Um, and Nelson is a community that has hotels. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, the, it's hard for Bowen because we, we're different. We're, we're different than any of the other communities, but it's good to look at them and to see how they've set it up. And for a lot of the uh, common people doing short-term rental on Bowen, the 120 days is probably appropriate. So for a good bulk, but there, there are, some people that are operating and they're important to this economy they're important to supporting year-round visitation for creating a sustainable economy they they not only are supporting restaurants and shops they're hiring people to work on their houses they're hiring gardeners they're hiring people that clean so they're 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 stimulating a lot of jobs within um, our are on our island in our economy that go beyond the shops and restaurants. So did, so my question to you, because I, I haven't followed this process as closely as I should have, was, was it, would, was it ever presented to council to, to consider different um, types of licenses that would monitor and uh, the short term rental, was there ever a commercial license option presented? Was any of this, kind of stuff ever presented is my question. Uh, yes, the, the commercial license and the longer one-year license was presented. Um, the answer has always been those people can apply for a rezoning so they can have a permanent year-round license and become what's called commercial guest accommodation. Yeah, but we know that to apply for that, that takes a lot of time yeah, and yeah, it's also no. really expensive, right? Yeah, and some islands have done the temporary use permit process as well. Um, some communities. So um, those have been suggested. Okay, so they were presented. Okay. Yeah, so it's, um, but those, those are good comments you, you, you made and so people can make those kind of comments tonight. And I think, uh, yeah, so that seems like the, tonight is when it gets more on record. So, Jody, That's right. <laughs> what time does it start? The meeting, the public hearing is at four o'clock. Um, Steph, can you send around the public hearing notice to everybody? Oh, I'm or sure I can find it. That's on the web page. It's not the easiest thing in the world to find. Oh, it is now because it's on the calendar, so it's on the home page. Okay, so as far as discussion in this meeting, then, um, maybe if uh, Vaughn, I don't know if you're going to connect with Jody afterwards, um, but it sounds like whatever you questions you'd like to bring up this evening would be good to have in writing as well as a submission. Um, yeah, so well, the, that's the thing, because the, the in writing is something that some people can read afterwards and go over in preparation for the meeting where the third reading well started. i'll i'll try and do that because actually i can't make the four i already have other plans so yeah well then if, and then a written submission would be good okay. yeah just just uh, coming from us personally though you're saying well i don't know if tourism bowen is is 
I mean, maybe it's already put in a submission. They put in a submission. Okay. Yeah. So maybe yeah. if you have an addition to tourism Bowen's submission, maybe you two could review that and, and, uh, and make those comments well, do, as yeah like are we are we supposed to be replying as part of the committee no, or just no, the committee, at this point we've done the committee's accepted yeah. the referral and we provided our recommendations okay and so our, I'm just our minutes as an and, individual this is as individuals yes yeah. and i guess from from our committee then um vaughn you said you're you're not able to attend uh, i suppose jody if you attended um you could again, as Allison has suggested, reflect on what we as a committee had recommended. Oh, Rod, Rod, Does that this work? Is, this is a, for the committee referral. The committee referrals happened. The process now is for the individual citizens. Right, right. But I'm just saying, Jody, if Jody's going to attend, um, yeah. she she might like to just take our submission, our, our our recommendations that we sent to council, and reflect on them as her, you know, as an individual. Yeah, no, if she supports those recommendations, then yeah. there's no harm in, in an individual, you know, taking any of the committee's um, referral reports. And yeah, I, I would be happy to do that myself as an individual too. But I, again, I'm not going to be able to attend the meeting tonight yeah. either. So, but maybe I could do a small summary myself personally, and I might use our committee recommendations as a starting point. Well. I, I think people like Allison is saying can personally just write a quick letter yeah. um, and have it on record. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I just, I would like to see the bylaw a bit more fleshed out. Like somebody yesterday on um, Facebook pointed out environmental concerns and stuff. And I'm totally on board with that about maybe there should be limits on how many we have and maybe, or maybe they limit it in certain areas. You know, I mean, I would like to see a, a much more, I think Michael used the term nuanced um, bylaw instead of this one size fits all and all of, you know, th right. there are, it can be better improved. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll look forward to your comments at the meeting tonight. And, and uh, I think as far as this meeting goes, we should probably leave our discussion there for now. Um, and we've got uh, a couple other uh, reports coming up. I guess the next thing would be um, staff. The staff report, yeah. Okay. Um, so just two items I flagged to report on, which is an update from the Emergency Operations Center. As you may know, that the um, the EOC has been scaled quite down. The emergency program coordinator has taken on about four roles now. She's the chief of operations, the liaison, um, other things. I'm sitting on that group just as a link to the business community, just to keep them apprised of we're kind of in recovery phase now. We are advanced planning for a second wave of the pandemic, but as far as the first wave is concerned, we're, we've got more of a recovery lens, and that's primarily economic. So. I'm not an economist, as you all know, but I'm just providing information from all of your amazing activities and keeping them up to date. So, um, yeah, continue. They're they're appreciating that, and and you know, continue to keep me prized of your great work. And does anyone have any questions about that? The OC. Nope. Okay. Well, I really uh, certainly appreciate all your effort, Steph, both in the online meetups and and you know, I would say extra effort on behalf of the business community and your staff position here during the time. So uh, I do think that um, the one thing is clear is that is that we're not done uh, recovery. We're not even really started it yet. So um, so there will be lots to come and and uh, there'll be a lot of, I think, personal businesses or businesses that are uh, that are going to be looking for assistance or guidance or support in, in lots of different ways over the next few months and even the next year. Well, the municipality is aware of that and the, yeah. the term economic recovery is at the very, very top. So um, we've, you guys have done a great job of creating space for that. So. Yeah. And, and some of those things that are visible, I noticed that uh, um, they're expanding the outdoor um, area at the pub right now. Um, which is uh, which is great to see, um, and I understand that Kelly Kono has booked outdoor public space at at Athletic Park for her activities and 
you know, so, so that's terrific the way the municipality has been responding and staff has been responding to businesses' requests as they've been trying to, to reimagine their businesses. So there's a document that our communications coordinator is working on right now. It's a very simple info sheet saying what we can do, what we can't do. So this is what we can do to support businesses and what we will do, and this is what we really can't do. So if you guys have any kind of um, input on that, maybe things, requests you've heard that are outlandish or requests that you've, then, that, or that you've heard that are reasonable, please let me know because I've been asked to provide feedback on it. I'll make a note to send it to you as well. I think this is an interesting, um, not issue, but, um, you know, there, there's always been this tension between the municipality, you know, from legally, right, cannot, cannot, cannot do anything to directly support a business. Mm -hmm. it yet. It looks legally, yeah, it's legal. Thank right? You. And yeah. yet, what? Uh, you know, uh, changing some bylaws and helping, you know, restaurants get you know, get a blanket uh, 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 liquor license for <laughs> so, so restaurants can expand is definitely helping businesses. Yeah. So it's a really interesting, like, you know, we want it. Obviously, Ms. Pelly wants to support businesses. That's why we have this committee. That's why we do what we do. You know, the interesting tension there, you know, because every time you ask for something new that hasn't been done before, it's like, well, we're not really supposed to, and yet we can, you know? So that's what this document will hopefully speak to. Is yeah. like we're clear about this, so people don't. Yeah. Know. And there's also a pandemic response as well. That's yeah, and, it, and it, you know, you may not be able to totally define what you can and cannot do all the time because it's going to be. Ch it should be changing. It should be flexible with what the situation is, which is what we've seen the municipality be, right? Yeah, and, but I mean, there's also. I mean, Wendy's on the call. Like, there's there are provincial levels of government. There's also metro. Yeah. The, the, you know, we get calls about when the power goes out. We get in a lot of trouble for the power going out. So this really, we can't really do anything about that. I mean, like, oh, I see what you mean. Yes, okay. <laughs> yeah. Point though, in terms of how municipalities have jumped in and, you know, have done, you know, we're in unprecedented times and what municipalities have done, which they haven't typically done. I think Bowen Island can be assured that other municipalities have done similar things in terms of meeting in a park with a, with a beverage, so to speak. You know, Bowen wouldn't be the first. And, you know, as we look at other municipalities and, and the regulations that they implement, we could be assured that we could likely do the same thing and, uh, and know that that precedent has already been set by other municipalities during these unprecedented times. Thank you, Kristen. <laughs> That's all for me. Ron, I think we're on tourism next. Okay, great. Um, Jody, do you want to give us an update on yeah. how things are going? Uh, yeah, uh, I want to um, echo Rod's comment and uh, thanks to Steph for being so solid through all this and keeping us informed and reporting back for us and everything. So I just want to echo that first of all. I appreciate all that you do, Steph. Um, and uh, when when I was disappointed, I was excited the other day, and then disappointed when I looked in further. As Allison mentioned, we had applied for one of those rural dividend um, uh, grants, and uh, when I looked at the list of who was awarded, we weren't. I was sad. Um, Tourism Bowen Island, um, because uh, some of our, a chunk of our revenue comes from our members, has obviously been also very hit hard uh, by the fact that our members um, are hit hard. So that, that impacts us as well. And uh, we will have to be looking for every possible way to try to continue on um, and supporting our members and doing what we can. Um, we will be opening the visitor center. Um, well, first of all, phase three hasn't uh, been formally announced, though they're hinting that it might be announced for this week. Um, but uh, I am noticing that people, just generally speaking, are moving around a lot more. I went into Vancouver last week uh, for like a dentist appointment and that. And, uh, and yeah, things are looking quite kind of normalized in many ways. And uh, on my way back to the ferry terminal, 
um, noticed that the Nanaimo Ferry and the Sunshine Coast uh, Ferry were loaded up with people looking like they were off for recreational pursuits with bikes and all sorts of things. So uh, I am noticing, uh, you know, more people coming to Bowen, but I think people have been respecting it. Whenever I get inquiries, I'm still saying we're, uh, um, you know, phase two, please postpone coming at this time. But um, so we are going to be opening the visitor center in anticipation mm -hmm. and getting ready to make sure that we can um, be there front line. And uh, I, I, our role this year will be um, in addition to our normal sort of destination management and, and um, hooking people up with restaurants and things like that, that, uh, that uh, we will be also educating and encouraging COVID health protocols. So um, I see our role at the visitor center as frontline people um, helping to reassure the local residents that uh, we're doing what we can to make sure that people are health, uh, following health protocols. Um, yeah, I think that uh, is short and sweet. If anybody has any questions, let me know. Rod, may I comment on that? Uh, as most of you know, I'm out for several hours a day with my dog hiking. Um, I come across many people coming off the ferry and hiking uh, the trails, and I'm the only one with a mask. And I was wondering, Jody, if one of the things you can do at the, the uh, visitor center is encourage people to um, not just social distance, but also to wear masks. It's not required, but I think it's a recommendation from uh, the province and something you could uh, reiterate when you're talking to, if people come in with questions. Um, we, we follow and will be um, supporting what the provincial health recommendations are. Um, so that is the, you know, the, whatever it is, we will be okay. upholding that. We have received a, very uh, the and the other thing which i was actually on facebook yesterday because people were going back and forth about this bc ferries is requesting that every passenger doesn't matter which run has a mask so we will be updating our website we will be right. need to know information before you come but then once if our staff can talk to people we will be providing that information too Excellent. so um we, we have a tiny, a small amount of funds from Destination BC to help um, COVID related. Uh, so we will have a few masks that we can hand out to people if they don't. Um, but generally speaking, if you're walking the trails and you're um, outside in particular, I mean, Bowen is good that way that people are coming a good chunk for the nature experience. So that's, that's really healthy kind of covid appropriate behavior to be outside and you don't have to wear a mask if you're actually on the trail unless you're gonna run into somebody closer than two meters so i i agree about the trails but yesterday in the cove um we had a fair amount of uh, uh traffic um and again uh i don't know how many were coming off the ferry but uh there was uh there were very few there were no masks and that was just in the cove so just something i'd like um um, you know, it's something to, it's a recommendation by province. Um, and I think it's something that we can uh, reinforce. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, One, no, we will, yes. we will absolutely be following that. And if a business, yes. for instance, if somebody wants to go into a business and if they let us know that they request people to wear a mask, we would certainly say that if that is their requirement. So absolutely. We'll do our best. <laughs> I wonder if I wonder if uh, Steph from um, Emergency Operations Center uh, perspective that we could ask that um, there's I don't know if it's required so maybe it's a volunteer thing where that aspect of people's safety plans for their business is is registered so that the tourist office could access that list. So for, so I'm just wondering like as Jody said if someone if for instance, the general store says we request customers wear a mask. They let Jody could let people know that, but does she have to? You know, is is it have to be that everyone contacts Jody, or is or is there an opportunity for us to help facilitate um, more of a, a general list? 
Oh, we, or you're muted again, Steph. We, we don't hear you. Muted, yeah. uh, just to let you know, we, we generally are, um, on a, any given year, we are interacting quite closely with businesses. We want to stay up to date so that we are giving accurate information. So we are kind of doing that anyway. But if the emergency um, response, if they want to do something, um, they could. But um, we are doing that interpersonal kind of connection with businesses anyway. Um, I was also. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave that to, to, to Jody. I, I was just going to say I would be happy to do that if it's an, um, an engagement opportunity that Jody can take advantage of. I'll leave it to her. I just did want to add things change so quickly. So mm -hmm run around a, um, a gathering data which i'm happy to do but then it changes so yeah I leave it with Jody as far as that engagement opportunity i was um, going to see my support jody i'm happy to help you so uh, oh. if i understand it correctly everybody is supposed to have a business plan posted safety on their door safety so plan. um yeah yeah Okay, uh, just as a aside here for a moment, I, Kirsten has to leave for a few minutes. And as Steph pointed out, I guess we'll lose our quorum, but we're not actually making any votes or resolutions. We're just receiving information, I believe, for the rest of the meeting. Is, is that right, Steph? Where is the agenda? Yeah, I'm um, looking at the agenda. I don't see any. Um, maybe you should just quickly ask if anybody has any questions on the information items and then... Uh, That'll be yeah. the, we. Okay, well that that's what I'll do. I mean, so um, so we're we're just in the tourism Bowen Island area. We have an arts council. Um, uh, I'm we're going to talk about business engagement um, from the perspective of our meetings, but also some some follow up activities that could be happening in the next month or so. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the gift certificate program, which is part of the Rural Islands Economic Partnership and the welcome back uh, and the business navigator program. And then we have other business. So unless there's something in other business that requires resolution or confirmation, I think we could continue. Does that make sense to you, Steph? Yeah, okay, good. So so I guess you're, you're okay from our perspective, Kirsten, um, <laughs> and uh, do what you need to do there. Um, nice to see you, Kirsten. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, so I think from your minutes perspective, Steph, that this will be sort of the meeting lost quorum and then you'll just have notes after that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So uh, are we complete then with tourism, Jody? Do you have anything else you want to touch on right now? No? Okay. I have a quick question and I'm sorry if Jody already mentioned it. I was looking up something else um, in relation to a question somebody had asked. Did you get any um, student grants? Yes, we did get uh, we did get student grants. Oh, good. Okay. And that's fine. I yeah. Just wanted, yeah, I was under the impression they were hard to come by this year, so I just wanted to check. Yeah. No, actually, um, I've got a little bit of connection with um, Patrick Wheeler's office, so um, they checked with me and stuff like that, which was nice. Yeah. Thanks. In that, actually. Um, I'd be interested to know, Jody, because my understanding is is that um, under the emergency supports that where students and volunteering in particular, there's quite a bit more um, the students can be paid to volunteer through emergency support programs uh, this year. And I'm wondering if that's something potentially, especially for COVID information and awareness that might be useful for tourism Boeing. Or even for the Muni. Rod, I, I hadn't heard of that. Uh, I'd be interested in um, seeing the link for that. Like, like for our our in regards to our student grant, we're probably good. But if yeah, if there was a role, because uh, I certainly met some students that I really liked, and um, it would be nice if they have an opportunity to make some money doing something. Yeah, like like Allison said, if it's COVID related and all that kind of stuff. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, bring up that link afterwards, and I, okay. I don't think I have my fingers to put it in the chat, but uh, I'll okay, send it great. to you instead. Thank you. Okay, so uh, uh, the Arts Council, Ed, do you want to um, take it over from there? 
we'll get you unmuted. Uh, first, you the go. first thing, um, uh, we are the hearth, and I'd like that to be uh, right. boilerplate uh, in all of our agenda items. Um, so the big news, um, Jamie spoke about uh, uh, the uh, blessing of the sign yesterday, and I, I'm very anxious to see the video. Uh, but our really big news is on July 1st, we're going to reopen the gallery. Um, it's, uh, it will be a, a real life opening. Uh, staff have been, uh, have been uh, informed and trained, volunteer staff have been informed in their training in, in uh, uh, the pro COVID protocols. Uh, we actually have a new plexiglass uh, 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 personal protection uh, around our, um, our desk and we will be uh, celebrating um, Jean Bradbury. It's sort of an artist party. It's 4 to uh, 6.30 p.m. And uh, for us, it's exciting. We're, it's our, our first real step moving back to normal, whatever that means. Any thoughts, Jamie? Okay, thank you. So people can, you're saying you're having a gathering? Yes. Yes, and it will. There will will be social distancing guidelines. Uh, so yes, it is a party. It is people getting together. There will be limits number of people inside at any one time. Um, and uh, I'm not sure, Jamie. Maybe you can talk to this. I don't know how is the specifics of enforcing it. Are we going to have social distancing police? Yeah, you're the policeman, Edward. Okay, Edward. <laughs> And can you be yeah. outside or like, how are you going to yes, do it? Yes, yes, inside and outside. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely be following all of the uh, protocols to make sure that um, there's a lot of physical distancing going on, everyone in their own social bubbles. Um, but we're trying to open and celebrate art as best we can. Doors wide open and um, yeah, limiting how many people come in. Are you limited to how many people can gather still? Or are we still at like the 50 or something? 50. Or? How are you going to deal with the 50 people? Social, because that's Bonnie Henry's. There can't be an event of more than 50 people. Well, we'll limit how many people are in the gallery. Um, probably six at a time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thanks. That's super. Uh, exciting to hear and and we're fortunate that it's july and and probably uh it'll be very nice to be outside uh the gallery especially with all the new landscaping and it's looking really great around that area sorry did you say july 1st yeah okay thanks okay well then um our next is uh business engagement working group and uh i just um you know again in context I think the, nearly the entire um, focus of this committee for the last three months has been on uh, business engagement, uh, business engagement through our re relationship with the um, businesses and the emergency uh, operations center and, and through our meetings and meetups um, and uh, through some of the, the programs and the business navigator that we'll talk about in a minute minute um what uh, what i wanted to do was just kind of sum up that we had uh 12 digital business meetups uh every wednesday and uh now we've moved to monthly so we're decided that we're going to be i believe it's the second tuesday morning of the month and um we'll be sending out through steph and our whole business list the announcements ahead of time again for the next one um but we just found that the numbers were dropping and people were getting busy with their businesses uh, and that uh, it made sense, I think, to set a next date, but not to um, have them every week uh, going forward here, especially entering into our summer and, and busy business season. Um, one of the, the things that had been discussed through uh, the organizing group was how do we stay in touch with or, or what meaningful um, activity might we have with businesses that, that affects the community, a business community as a whole. Um, and the idea at this point, and it is just an idea at this point, is to um, 
to look at engaging on a qualitative study on customer behavior in our businesses and in stores. Uh, and this, and maybe it relates back to Ed's experience on the trail. You know, so Ed is concerned about people not wearing masks on the trail, maybe being in, in fairly close proximity to each other, especially in the Cove area. Um, and Ed is a pretty level-headed guy, but you know, someone who is less level-headed perhaps might have take issue with the tourist on the trail and give them a dressing down about the fact that they're not taking proper precautions. And you know, there's an incident there that um, has an impact on our community. Um, and I could foresee, and I think that it's reasonable to, to think that these incidents will happen over the course of the summer on BC ferries, getting on and off the ferries, in front of businesses or, or in businesses. Um, and that will affect people's experience on Bowen Island. It affects the community and, it, and, it, and potentially affects the, um, the business's uh, viability, you know, their ability to, to, uh, to make money. Um, so th there would have to be a voluntary study, I think, and, and Chris Corgan has designed uh, studies like this before. He's interested in this study and has volunteered to help be a part of it. So if this committee was interested in following through with that, um, I, what I would like to do is maybe get one or two people to be a part of the advisory group um, and help take that information out to businesses and, and collect information from businesses. Um, so I don't know if that's meaningful to anyone else in the group, but I'd like to hear anything you have to say about it at this point. Rod, is this a uh, uh, this qualitative research um, interview format, uh, observational format? Has Chris uh, spoken about that yet? No, we haven't. We haven't really talked in detail about it at all. Uh, I, I invited Chris to, to attend the meeting this morning, just you know, so we might be able to to have a quick discussion about that. But unfortunately, he's not able to attend. Um, but uh, I'd be willing to, know. to work with you too on that. Very much so. It's, it's okay. Follow through the research we've been doing over the last five or six years. Yeah. Rod. Yeah. What What is the purpose? Why do we want to observe that? Like, well, what, what do we do with with the information? I guess is what I'm saying. I, I think there's a number of things that could be done with the information. I think to a certain degree, uh, we have to look at our community first, of course, um, and what value would it be to our businesses? Well, I think. Um, Perhaps, you know, and again, with research, you don't know what the value is going to necessarily be until until you see what comes out of it. But um, and that depends on design uh, as well. But the uh, if one business is having an issue, that's one thing. And they might be able to uh, to find help from other businesses because of the shared information. Um, if many businesses are having similar issues, then maybe there's something that the municipality needs to do in terms of assisting traffic flow or, or public education. Um, if community members are being impacted, you know, both mental health or physical health because of interactions that are happening in, in places of business, um, then I think, again, it's good that the municipality would know about that um, and perhaps this committee. Uh, but then going beyond our community, I think, um, you know, we have an opportunity, and we say this a lot on Bowen Island, I think with good reason that um, we, we have an opportunity for leadership. I think other island communities in our Rural Island Economic Partnership would be interested in, in this kind of information. And I think all, ultimately it would speak to what Stephanie was talking about. You know, they're, they're, they have their ears open. They want to hear about what's going on in the communities and how the province can help and what's needed. Um, so I think that that's, that's all possibilities for what could come out of a, a study like that. So that seems like a lot of work for volunteers. I mean, I know Chris might be interested. They've done him and his, um, his uh, co work co colleague there have done some work in this area um, or this type of study, right? They, they, they were looking, they kind of, they're very interested in it, but um, I guess I'm kind of wondering, are we anticipating that we're going to be seeing a lot of this kind of, you know, interactions or anxiety or issues in the community, I guess, for, for the amount of work that I think would go into this, are we saying we're anticipating uh, that a lot of that will be happening? So we should, you know, we should document it, understand it and see what we can do to address it. I, I don't think it's just about anxiety. Uh, we're um, opening business into 
um, what is now being called the new normal. Um, we're not going to go back to business as usual for a long time, if ever. I see this as almost a baseline study of opening up in a new way, uh, facing new challenges, um, also uh, maybe identifying some new opportunities. And just being a, uh, a broad-based uh, uh, source of information, not broad-based, but a, uh, a source of information to see where we start, what issues may be, and help us move forward. Uh, in, in, so, in technical so, so terms, it's this called information a, for like how long do you think a month? I um, we would have to get together. I've I've not talked to anybody about this. Uh, yeah. The, the de design has not been uh, uh, formula format formulated yet. Um, uh, it's the question is uh, is there are there people who want to work on this? I I would Chris would. Chris and I have worked together on a number of research projects, and uh, I think it would be valuable to um, go forward and at least do look at a design and see what that would entail. Okay, sounds good. Can I, um, so just sort of, um, I'm still not understanding why it has to be done in person. You're going to go and talk to the business owner? Or are you going to stand there and observe? Or we have, I have no idea. This is, uh, I, I've, I've heard this swimming around in the ether, and this is the first time I've actually spoken about it. I have, I, have, I really am not in a position to say at the moment what the methodology would be. I'd like to talk to Chris. Um, there's a number of ways to do it. Uh, you can, and um, I, I'm, I'm willing to help go forward with this as, as much as I am with. My other responsibility with the uh, uh, neighborhood emergency response program, but um, I think it could be valuable as a as a baseline study. Uh, going no, I, I, I'm I'm not concerned about gathering the information. I guess I'm just concerned about um, the time commitment takes. You know whether it, so when you're looking at it, would you look at the pros and cons of just sending an email questionnaire to everybody? to just, you know, with the two or three questions and ask them to answer it or a list of yes, no, have you had type of questions. Maybe Alton, you can volunteer to work on the working group with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's how I would do it. I, I, well, I would, yeah, yeah, I would I say, okay. okay. Yeah. I'm like, my other question was, you know, having been a small business owner and if people are list, dis distancing in their um, stores, um, you're not going to be wanting to be in there talking to the store right. owner when a customer wants to come right. in, which means doing it after hours on, you know, either on the phone or something like that. I mean, maybe that's an easier way to, you know, so. Anyway. Okay, so, so let's, let me interject for a minute and say, let's not get into trying to think about what a study like this actually would look like, the design, as that is said. Um, one, the, the, I guess floating the idea, I mean, it sounds like there are a couple of people who would volunteer and that's, and, and I think that's enough to, to say that um, we would uh, be interested, at least myself, Ed, Chris and, and his people. But um, the question is, is, is whether the committee even wants to entertain, you know, being involved with something like this. And, and then I guess the next step would be, you know, just in, and I think in, if the committee does want to be involved or in it, or at least entertain the idea of something like this, uh, then the study could be designed or roughed out, I guess, would be the next step, Ed. And then, and then we might look at it again and understand better as a committee what it is. Uh, but at the same time, it'd be nice to know from both from the province and from the municipal uh, Emergency Operations Center, if they know of anything that's going on like this elsewhere in the province, and also, um, does this fit any criteria for funding and programs? Um, I will take one more step and just say that um, we do have funding for the Community Economic Development Plan. Um, we have put that on hiatus during COVID. Um, the Helen, of course, who was, was hired to complete the plan, um, her contract was was terminated because she wasn't able to continue during COVID. We've had uh, the opportunity now that we have a new CAO who will be responsible for the person who is going to 
to complete that plan um, as a committee we're, and, and council, we're gonna have to see how that's gonna happen. So there's, there's quite a bit going on in that respect. There's also been talked about, so that's a person or time that this, I'm not saying that this project is necessarily part, part of that going forward, but it could potentially be part of that. Um, and it might be interesting for us as a community creating an economic development plan to have information like this going forward. Um, the, uh, so, right. so there's a number of things, like everything is kind of up in the air. So what is the next step? Um, and, and we've talked a lot about having a business association and, and creating more business. We're talking about business engagement here. How do we continue to engage with businesses at this uncertain time? And, and I think that the, this initiative is kind of in my discussions risen to the top. So I'll just, uh, Rob, from a process perspective, we've lost quorum. So there can't yeah. be any committee decisions to launch a new project or go forward with yes. something yeah. at this point. So can we not have a working group though? Well, just we can't strike a working group, but if a few of you wanted to volunteer on your own and come back to the next meeting with, with a refined, but I mean, there's not enough of us here to know whether, mm -hmm. you know, they want to advance the project or not. Right. Yeah, that's that's a good point, and and maybe it's not important at this point. We're just we're this is as Ed has said, this is the first time we've really been discussing it. So, uh, let's let's we've taken their ten minutes. We've discussed it. Um, we can maybe leave it there for the moment. And let, Jody, you have something to say. And so does Steph. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I I must have um, blanked out at some point, um, Rod, when you were explaining. Can you give me the sort of elevator pitch of what the study would be? I see that on the agenda it says qualitative study on customer in-store behavior, but um, can you just redefine that again for me? Because I, I've lost. Well, as, as an example, as an example, um, let's not say a store, let's say at the visitor center. So let's say that um, at the visitor center, you find that um, a number of times in a day, you get too many people trying to crowd into the visitor center and you have difficulty with managing the traffic flow in the visitor center. And so th this creates stress for the people who are operating the visitor center and you know, visitors aren't being served. Um, so a study like this potentially, and I'm not saying how, but could be designed so that you to keep a record of that. It happened six times today, you know, or this event happened, or, or it, the, maybe the study seeks to divine, to, to discern what events actually are causing stress, you know, and then seeks to define those events. You know, you know again, this is not my area of expertise, you know, designing studies and, and quantitative, uh, you know, measuring consumer behavior, but, but th that is essentially what is we're talking about is is how do how do we actually so we say that the businesses are very stressed out by having re, by having too many visitors you know or do we say we have a study and it tells us this you know this is what the study is going to do and i think jody um what i'm what i'm understanding better now too is that we, we have been talking about how we're going to continue to respond. I mean, things are going to change. They're going to keep changing. They're going to keep changing, right, as we go along. So I think this is one more piece of information that would be really useful to have that, that, that as Edward said, can identify challenges that we might be able to help with or opportunities, you know, in, in different ways of doing things. So I, I, I do think it would be quite valuable, actually. Okay. I'm... Um, thanks. Thanks for that. I, I think I don't think it's specific to Bowen. I don't think it's specific to visitors. Um, I think it is about making sure that everybody understands the protocol. Like a business should have a sign on the door, one entry, one at a time. It's really clear. I mean, I'm I'm kind of I I think I understand. Maybe you want to focus on what specific things are challenges for Bowen. But I wouldn't. Um, I don't think specific to Bowen and like I was in a, in Vancouver the other day, I went to, you know, certain things and they, even though they had signs in the door, people still weren't reading them. So it's, it's consumer behavior anywhere, or how do you get people to change their behavior? 
So I, I don't know, I'm, I'm a little bit lost, but I can understand that it would be good to survey uh, what are Bowen specific challenges, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, I think, I think yeah. that's the point. You know, you know what it reminds me of? When we did our business outreach to retail sector, remember we were doing the either breakfast meetings or luncheon meetings in person back in the day. <laughs> um, one of the things that came out of that was uh, a realization um, that there had been quite a bit of shoplifting happening, happening in the cove, that the retailers were finding that there were more shoplifters than they were used to, or at least it, it just wasn't that widely known. And so with that information, we were able to uh, contact the RCMP and just get a soft but more, you know, commitment to being a little bit more present, a little bit more walking about the cove, a little bit more, you know what I mean? So we were, something was able to come out of it just with that bit of information that came from that business community we didn't know about. Yeah, that's a good example of one. Okay, so Steph, you've been waiting to say something too. Just, um, I think the questions when they're, they're framed is, um, just a sec, honey, how many people are coming in? Are you having a hard time managing that? Those are very caring questions that I, putting myself in the shoes of a business owner, I would probably be happy to receive that question. I'm just concerned about over-engaging or engagement fatigue right now. When the Zoom meeting kind of started to move to a monthly model, people have been engaging, and now they're busy getting their businesses going. I send a lot of emails. There have been surveys. There's a lot of engagement about the gift certificate program, um, getting people to send photos, like where help and support becomes harassment. <laughs> it's just to use a harsh word. That's my own feeling. That's just to be mindful of that. I think it's a good idea, but I'm just very careful of where engagement becomes too much. Or when they just That's want a good point, Steph. Although I can see that this, by the time they figure out what they're going to do, <laughs> and get around to doing it. Yeah. Uh, they, it's not going to be me. Um, it's probably going to be another Don't month, six right weeks. Then. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so by that point, we won't have had the so many digital, you know, meetups anymore. And yeah. I think it'll be a little, I, I get the point though. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I think at this point then, as Allison has pointed out, there's nothing for us to decide on. Um, I think Ed and myself and Chris and and if anyone else is interested uh, in in learning about what they suggest for because they're more the people who have the experience in designing a study like this uh, and we'll bring it back to our next meeting as to uh, to what that looks like. Um, so moving on to the next thing, which is the is the gift certificate um, program. The, uh, it's been launched, as you probably all well know, the islandcomeback.ca. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I'll put you on the spot for a second here, Jamie. Do you know about the gift certificate program in your capacity with Hearth? I've been listening to it. Um, yeah, okay, okay. But I haven't really okay so so I did I didn't think so because I don't think hearth is registered as an organization yeah. but I just as an example wanted to let you know uh, that hearth actually could register for free um, there's a e-commerce platform that's integrated and that would be a little bit more complicated I guess because of the um, not-for-profit status you'd have to have two signers for instance to set up your online account with stripe and so on um, but it it would allow people to buy, as an example, um, gift certificates to be used at Hearth. Um, and so people could buy them. It's an e-commerce platform, so they could buy them from anywhere. Um, the, uh, the user addresses it to someone by an email. Uh, the, whoever's the recipient of the gift certificate, whether it's themselves or someone else, uh, gets an email with a code and a gift certificate, which they have on their phone, and they can bring in to the Hearth, as an example. Um, and use that to purchase something. And, and so the, the notion as you go through it is that it's supporting our, our distinct rural island uh, communities. And it's, it really is designed to speak to people who are fans of our community. So locals, um, perhaps people who have second homes here and friends and family and, uh, and people who love to visit the there are different rural islands and so who value our rural culture and, and character of our communities. Um, 
there there have been uh, I don't have the list in front of me, but I think there there are close to thirty Bowen businesses registered now. Um, that's the largest registration for any of the islands except for Salt Spring, which I think has fifty five. Uh, so population proportion wise, we're about the same uptake on Bowen, um, which is great. And uh, there are, I, again, I, I don't have the stat in front of me, but we can circulate them. Um, there are, out of the 18 islands that are part of the Rural Island Economic Partnership, I think there's about 10 who are now participating in the program. Um, th what's really uh, exciting and interesting is, is it's moving into its next stage. So it's been launched. There are people, uh, businesses represented on different islands. Consumers can and and have been going in and purchasing gift certificates for those local stores. Um, then there's um, there, the next stage is further sponsorships, regional type activities, uh, and what it's going to do next and how it's going to evolve. And, th and those things um, uh, are not done and they're not decided, um, but, uh, but I'll just give you the picture of the vision right now. Um, and that is that this can become more of an e-commerce platform for our rural island communities. Uh, and so it serves the whole community and all the businesses and organizations within it. Um, and that it's delivered um, with the, it, in differentiating itself from by local BC and, the, and some of the, the province-wide programs, it is specifically um, focused on our, our rural island communities and tailored to them. Um, so right now there's a possibility and it's being discussed that um, there can be some sponsorship to the site, which could bring in more revenue, which could then drive um, this next stage of development and in, in, into a, a larger e-commerce platform um, that small businesses would be able to benefit from. Uh, but in the immediate term, um, Steph, maybe you can speak to this because you had some discussions with um, our by local BC contacts who, who we as a community pay by local into by local BC for some of the marketing and communications. You want to talk about that? Yeah, I was just thrilled. So I followed up with um, by local BC. They have a gift certificate program. So I just thought, oh my God, now we're going to do another one. So we can give engagement fatigue. I don't want to go around getting them to register for a second one. This is going to be awkward. And then I spoke to Amy Robinson and share those feelings. And she said, why don't we just link you guys over? So we're going to have our own page on local BC, um, Van City. That's the one you were talking about, Vaughn, the Van City local BC initiative. And they're just going to link it over to the Rural Islands one. Done. So we're and I, team. No nice. Excellent. And I thought that was super generous of them. Yeah. Yeah. And then in addition to that step, I think that uh, you're perhaps through your efforts, um, that's going to be uh, system wide. So all of the islands are going to have that uh, linked over. Okay. Wow. Awesome. Way to go, Steph. Thanks. I shared my, a couple days ago. I was like, where is this link? I can't find it. She's working on it. She's having some health problems. So yeah. Okay. Well, because, you know, they are going to be able to advertise that so much more, right? So that's yeah. awesome. Everybody doesn't have to go through the whole process and it still gets that, um, that marketing push for them, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it was a bit, they were a little irritated because they thought they want to be C thing. And then it's like, oh, we're the islands and oh, we're this, we're that. And they wanted to be C, but so maybe they've come to that conclusion. Can't beat them, join them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's good, and I, and I think it's it's perfectly in the spirit of of what we're all trying to do at this time. Um, the uh, sorry, I'm I'm, uh, I'm thinking two thoughts here. Um, so so moving forward, um, there's an opportunity for more businesses to register. It is free. It is fairly short. We sent out an email to businesses, sort of a blast email, um, with a note letting them know that it that it's happening again and welcoming them. I don't know if you have any sense of whether you had any uptake from, from that, uh, but we also, but we also advertised in this week's undercurrent, the uh, gift certificate program. Mm -hmm. I think it might be a back end issue. Like I was going to go and talk to people individually, if, but yeah. like Morgan's for example. Um, but I mean, that's, they've just got a new computer system for their staff, young staff. 
And then, so there's a, there's now a, a new administrative piece to this that they'd have to mm -hmm. do all that training. I, so I, I'm speculating just from conversations I've had with yeah. them, actually, but so, yeah. Just because I think to a certain degree, approach it, it and, the program does serve very s smaller businesses, like, mm -hmm. like the real mom and pop shop uh, people, which I think is fine at this point in the sense that, yeah, you're right. When you have more staff and more uh, administration, there's more to integrate uh, something like this into your business flow. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll, we'll see as things go along, we'll get, we'll get a real sense of how many people just... use it and what it will also, we'll also be getting reports on analytics, like how many people are coming to the sites and looking at it and looking at the businesses and Bowen Island page in particular. Uh, and that's through Google uh, site analytics. And we will also be, of course, uh, given the overall view stats of how much commerce is going through the site. So how many dollars are being spent in the community and, uh, and how that's looking. Uh, so it'll be very measurable as, as we go forward what the results are to this program. Can I just ask you a quick question? Yeah. Um, Steph, I'm just wondering if you're getting like people, like I was thinking, sort of thinking if I'm a business and I get a certificate and someone buy something from me maybe my gift certificate is for fifty dollars and i buy a 25 dollar item are the businesses asking you like how do i deal with you know that admin side of like okay they still have a credit somehow does this how does the system even do address that i guess not like that would be a bit like from the business side they would have to figure out how they track that i guess eh? The, when we send the registration information, there's a support line at the rural partnership and mm. so they're sending their questions to them. Mm. Um, I don't know. Okay. So you've not heard any like people saying, I don't know how to deal with it from the men's side on mine. So I'm not doing it. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and any other questions of that may Vaughn, do you want to talk about the business navigator pilot and where we're at with, uh, with that? Sure. Okay. So we did a one month pilot uh, where both Rod and I were, or either one of us were available for one on one consultations with uh, businesses trying to navigate the financial resources uh, that are out there. Um, and uh, so that's happened. We had about a dozen uh, different businesses um, contact us representing probably about 50 ish other uh, let's say self-employed uh, the, the people that these you know it might be a main business that has subcontractors or you know is a host business for other business people to go through so it actually had a uh, the numbers of calls were like like it's about a dozen but it represented a lot of businesses or business people on the island so that was really interesting we do feel like we were able to help them uh, a lot of people gave, you know, just anecdotally um, feedback was, yes, okay, this, I didn't know that, that was great. A couple of them were actually turned out to be uh, people who needed more of a, uh, um, just social assistance. And so um, it wasn't really what the program was for, but we helped them anyways. Um, so we're sort of, we're, we're now at the point where uh, we'd like to get some, we'd like to, we'd like to decide uh, what our recommendations are about going forward and what else is needed. So we've put, um, Steph is helping us put together a survey. Uh, it should be going out shortly to all of the participants and get some feedback on what they thought about the program, but also what, what more they would like to see going forward. And then we will uh, make our final recommendation to the community foundation who funded the project. Um, because they do have more funds available. Uh, so we, we're, we'll make a recommendation on what we think we'd like to see going forward, if anything. So for now, um, I'm still going to be taking calls. Um, if any, if uh, we're just going to sort of do a bridge thing in the interim, and I'm going to just keep taking the calls, <laughs> if there are any. And uh, in the next little while, we'll have uh, uh, more firm recommendations about what we want to do from there. Great, thanks, thanks, Vaughn. Uh, you know, I, I it was rewarding to be part of the conversations that we had, the ones that I was part of, 
uh, as well as I, I did get the sense that people really were grateful to have someone to reach out to, someone um, who knew about their local Bowen uh, community and, and, uh, and what their business was. Um, and we did refer people to Small Business BC and, and other programs that are, that are available. The um, uh, Canadian Chamber of Commerce has resiliency. There's a hotline that was, was opened. Um, I didn't get a good sense of whether people went that extra step or not, quite honestly. But, um, but it's in the larger context, uh, it did seem that there was having a, a community-based program uh, was meaningful to people. So I think that's, uh, that's an interesting finding. And that's um, some of the feedback we're asking them for is whether they actually did act on the recommendations and, and then were they successful? So that's going to be really interesting to know. Um, and then one other point I wanted to make was that we were looking at the sectors it represented and there was such a wide variety. So it was retail, it was tourism, it was health and wellness, it was sole proprietors and it was restaurant. So that it really, uh, show that there was a you know pretty wide ranging uh need in the community yeah great and that and just so, so everyone was clear about that that was primarily with support from the community foundations resiliency fund um and we understand that 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 fund is still operational it still is funded and um and that they they are looking uh at projects and will continue to look at projects in the community where there isn't uh, funding available in other respects to uh, to help the community at large um, get through the you know the difficult time. Um, so, does anyone else have any questions about business navigators? Because we're basically at the end, and I think we should wrap up if uh, if we don't have anything else. Okay. Well, it's great to see you all. And uh, I know Kirsten was going to join us again, but I think uh, that's probably uh, about it. Um, Jody, I, were you, did you just come back? You just came onto my screen. Or were you here the whole time? Um, no, I've been here the whole time. Sometimes I Good. walk off to use the washroom or something. So no, no, it's, it, your window <laughs> came back onto my screen. So I didn't know if, if you actually were with us. Okay. I was just saying we're going to close up. So let's do that. And, uh, uh, and I'd like to add yeah. one little piece of information. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow evening, I believe it's 6 or 6.30, the uh, link is six. on. Pardon? I think it's 6. Okay. The link is on the municipal uh, webpage. Uh, the uh, evacuation plan for the island is going to be presented to the public. Um, I really suggest that as many people uh, uh, watch this as possible. Uh, it will have uh, significant, I think there's significant information about what we might do in an evacuation. I've seen the plan. Uh, it's, it's good work. And uh, so. And okay. did, did, what did you say the, the, where's the information of that? Available? On the municipal, um, on the municipal uh, uh, muni page. Municipal. Okay. On the home page, go to the calendar, click on the 23rd yeah. and the details come off. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for that. Good. Okay. Well, uh, Jody, do you want to say something? Oh, something. Um, just sorry, additional business. Just because I had a little bit of back and forth with Steph, um, and I hate to go to it again, but the whole washroom thing. Um, and uh, what happened was through Destination BC, I was forwarded a link to uh, grants, accessible grants, and um, through the federal government. And it, uh, it seemed like a really good opportunity to me. So I reached out to staff and, and said, look, this could be a way to get a public washroom in the Snug Cove area because the municipality is not providing any uh, formal washrooms. Um, and it would be a good capital project and stuff. And uh, Steph gave me a little bit of feedback on what to do. And um, I followed up with an email to um, Patrick and uh, I haven't heard a response. Um, I don't think I will, even though I think this is a good opportunity for um, the municipality, uh, 
as the capital thing. Uh, I don't think it's in my role in tourism, Bowen, except for maybe to assist with it. And I haven't got a response. There's a really tight turnaround. So Steph had said that maybe bring it up at the Community Economic Development Committee meeting. And I'm sorry, it just popped in my head. So I just want to bring it up that I, I really do, um, just from my position in tourism and, and being in the Snow Cove area, really think the municipality should be providing better public washroom facilities. And um, yeah, so this is, I, I guess I just want it on the record that. Uh, you're, you're, um, you're, are you saying that you think the municipality should be applying for that grant? <sighs> I, well, I think it, I think it's an yeah. Um, I I think they should uh, as an opportunity. Um, this one is an accessibility grant, but for instance, I had a conversation with Colleen at the Caring Circle because she had been looking uh, through her work with Lighthouse. They were saying, well, there's no washroom facility for homeless people. Um, so there's there's this is opportunity, but there's kind of it doesn't seem anybody kind of you know willing to put in the effort or the time or have the time or ability and it is short notice now for this grant um but uh it just seems to me that that kind of a thing would one i think there should be a better washroom facility public washroom facility in snug cove and um i think that should be a a capital project of the municipality um, and just trying to figure out opportunities and a way to get that funded and stuff and this grant came up. So, um, sorry, I'm just kind of, it just popped in my head that I forgot to bring that up. Steph's had her hand up. Unmute yourself. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So the um, grant that Jody highlighted, 100,000 bucks, super exciting, um, went to the public department and um, they are, they're crying blood, like from the capital projects they're working on now. They've got four, the multi-use path, the Cove Bay Water Treatment Plant, Community Center, and Fire Hall. These are all huge projects that one person is taking on who's, yeah. So, but the good news is that Patrick comes from uh, Metro and he's keenly aware of the need for quality washroom facilities in parks. He doesn't like porta potties. He thinks those are great. So there's you got a fan for, for that, but he's bleeding from the eyes. So he, I've been hounding him, not hounding, and his and his administrative assistant. Um, he was going to bring it up with the CAO on Thursday, but they had a meeting to discuss capital projects. They didn't get to it. They were going to have an or sorry, that was earlier last week. Then there was one on Thursday. They didn't get to it again. I spoke to the CAO this morning to say this meeting was coming it might come up can i have an update yay nay maybe i need something to come back with no pressure and he says this is a great idea but of course yes who executes hundred thousand dollars there's a, a lot of staff etc b we couldn't two meetings we couldn't even get to it like we couldn't even get to discussing it we couldn't even get halfway through what we already have let alone getting to it so that's your update that's what i'm <laughs> report back is they want to like the the director of engineering has brought it to the cao and the cfo to discuss they can't even get to the discussion let alone the execution of the grant so it's not over yet um the administrative assistant seems to be fairly keen rachel she's saying it's an, it's not a difficult grant we don't need drawings we don't need anything and we don't have to spend it this year it can be next year that's where we're at yeah, so see. um can i ask did metro put um porta potties at the entrance down by the seaside cottage this year yes you and metro did that together okay so that i mean they've got the prime piece of land and i remember them talking about the old building being turned into proper washrooms but uh, uh. Yeah. um can we've put in two washrooms that aren't connected to um sewer or anything the ones out in um can we put one out at Cape Roger Curtis and, and one somewhere else um, that Bonnie put in uh, through the parks? So I, I was just thinking, can you ask her how much those cost? And what's the deadline for the grant, Jody? Report from last year. Um, uh, sorry, um, that grant was, I think it was um, like July, I want to say 13th. Yeah, I think yeah. I saw it and sent it on too. So, okay. All right. Um, 
the the other thing with that grant if you delve into you know the different layers it does give very specific funding for an accessible toilet and it gives all the dimensions and all that kind of the requirements that would need so for instance let's just say it's 20,000 that they will allow for an accessible toilet and it's 15,000 for an accessible shower shower those are two things that they they have kind of standard fees but then my question was on top of that how much for the like hooking up to the sewer and all that those kind of things would also need to be put in the grant application or figured out how much can we get for that how much can we get for the fact that bowen island is not in the urban center so there's more expensive costs because they do mention that so there's there's sort of standard um rates that they will fund for certain things but then it does say in the grant that there can be which i i'm hoping would be on top of that to meet the actual site specific requirements of uh, fulfilling that grant or th those things. Well, I'm just wondering if we can get it Metro to apply for the grant and put it on the corner down by the seaside cottages. So what would that well, be? Should we ask um, one of the council liaisons for that? Well, yeah, uh, I, I'm, I sent the grant application forms onto them already. So I, because I saw that grant. Um, so you want me to um, tester David? Or Allison, yeah. can you write them and say, can, can you please do this? We really want yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> let, let me talk to, to Maureen because she's on the Metro Parks Committee. And okay. um, um, yeah. So, so one thing about that was um, I didn't talk to Metro. Uh, I was thinking, okay, where would be a good position for this washroom? I think it should actually be um, on some metro land right by the visitor center, just in the sense that, um, and this is my thing from tourism, is that visitor centers, people, there's a high percentage of people that go yeah. specifically to visitor centers to use the washer. It's a very common uh, facility that is normally provided. And so that's where this grant, that's where my mind went immediately. Could it be a, a joint thing between Metro and the Muni or something? Uh, perhaps, yeah. Um, yeah, it just seemed like a really good opportunity to help kind of uh, cross off a few things at the same time. Or in other right. words, okay. I don't wanna see this washroom going where the seaside cottage is, preferably not. Um, because that's for some people that have accessibility issues, that's not a good location. I'm not saying it's right by the seaside, but that yeah. area, yeah. and it's yes. right by, there's a sidewalk and everything there now, so. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And it's easier, you know, so, yeah. Okay, great. Well, that'd be super, Allison, if you um, mention that to, to the, our Metro reps. Uh, and I guess okay. that's what we can do at this point. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. Well, thanks everyone for uh, being with us and uh, look forward to seeing you next uh, meeting uh, uh, July 27th. And then um, I'm assuming we don't have an August meeting scheduled, correct, Steph? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, and in the meantime, uh, we'll have some work going on in the background here. Thank Good. you, everyone. Okay, Great. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Rod, are you Bye. coming back out this way? Am I coming? Um, no, not today.